Hi, my name is Mark. Uh, this is the second video uh, in this playlist that I've put, you know, I'm putting together around my cervical spine surgery. Um, specifically, uh, what what's happened to this point? Um, I've now successfully had surgery and aside from my voice is a little rough this morning I've been talking a lot today um, <clears throat> I feel great uh, but we'll talk about that in another video how the surgery went the day of post uh, I'm one week out from surgery I had surgery on August 10th so I wanted to um, paint the full picture of what led to the decision to have surgery. Um, in my first video, I talked about this a little bit, uh, but I didn't get into details um, as far as the experience of getting, um, of consulting with uh, surgeons and figuring out what the course of action should be. Uh, in my case, I met with ultimately five different cervical spine surgeons, some orthopedic uh, specialists, uh, surgeons, some neurosurgeons, didn't really matter. Um, three of them were fairly on the younger side, lesser experienced side. Um, well, I take that back. Three of them are not widely published because the age and experience actually varied greatly in that group. Uh, two of them um, were are widely published, very well known. If you mention their name to another spine surgeon, you're probably going to get a oh yeah, he's very he or she is very good. So uh, I wanted to in this video talk through um, that what happened there um, and ultimately what my choices were, and it really was a choice. Um, the one thing that I, I look back and I shake my head at is that a lot of this, it was on me to figure out um, which path to choose, which, uh, and I really, I don't, I, I don't know the first thing about neurosurgery. So, uh, you know, buyer beware if you're running down this uh, path as well. So with that, um, a little bit about me, I'm, I'm 50 years old. About to turn 51 in a few weeks. Overall, overall health as presented, okay, and that's a key term there. Um, excellent. Uh, I'm actually a little, I'm very puffy in the face. I've got this horribly scraggly beard. That's all due to the surgery. Um, I've put on probably 10, 15 pounds over the last three months due to the symptoms and inability to work out. But if you were to, uh, you know, um, see me a few few months ago. Uh, my day to day, I was very active, exercised vigorously daily, um, very healthy, <clears throat> other than my uh, my neck. So uh, back, it's so my symptoms and what started down this path really first started back in two thousand and four. Um, and that's when I woke up one morning about 6 a.m. I had a couple of, uh, I had a newborn, maybe two weeks old, and uh, a one and a half year old, um, 14 month year old actually. They were close, close together. Uh, woke up one morning around 5, 6 a.m. with the kids, brought them downstairs, uh, got them settled, uh, sat down at a little computer desk that we had and grabbed the mouse and all of a sudden the most painful shock waves start going down my right arm and I thought for a second is this it is this a heart attack but then I thought no that's I think that's the left arm so uh, thankfully it went away after a minute um, it was horrible uh, and it left a soreness down my arm which went away, uh, maybe two weeks goes by. Um, and then that was the first in a series of between 2004 and 2011, 
maybe once a year, once every eight months, once every eight, 18 months, it just varied. I'd get occasional, all of a sudden, out of the blue, soreness in my right scapula and the shoulder, and that would last one to two weeks. No radiculopathy in terms of arm pain or anything like that. Um, two weeks would go by, and I was back in action, no more, no more soreness or pain. Um, I did eventually go to a neurologist uh, that was a famous two-minute consult where he walked in. He asked me what the deal was. I told him the story I just told you, and he said, it's a pinched nerve in your neck. Nothing you could do about it. Just you know, lift weights if you want. And then that was it. And he'd walked out and collected my copay and whatever else, and that was the end of that. Fast forward 2012. Uh, so... During those years, um, as I was approaching age 40, I, something clicked. Uh, I, was, I was very, I was obese, very sedentary lifestyle up to that point. As I approached age 40, I thought, you know what, let me give this one more shot, try to lose weight, um, try, to, try to get healthy. And somehow I did. Lost uh, a lot of weight, close to 100 pounds. Um, kept most of that off throughout my 40s and into age 50. Uh, really great decade for me, um, very active. Uh, started off just dieting and eventually joined a gym and got on the treadmill and elliptical and did that, that stuff. But then about a year into it, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna join CrossFit and become part of the elite, uh, <laughs> elite 40 something year old athletes. Um, at one point, which I, I CrossFit's great, and I, you know, I, I hold no major regrets with it. But uh, there are people like myself, you put a timer or a score board up and put us in a competitive environment, which is what it is. Uh, I'm gonna do everything I can to win, and I was probably the least fit person in there, so I went, uh, all, all the way. Uh, anyway, uh, the coaching at most of these places, probably all of them really varies greatly from the, the owners probably great like they were at the place I was uh, a member of, but then they have their assistant coaches and they're, that fill in and they're all, most of them are people that just started a year before you, you know, so they're not, they're not trainers, they're, they're just workout warriors. Well, one day one of them had me, uh, had us do squats, behind, barbell squats behind the back. I go to grab the bar and I put it behind me and all I, I just heard cracks. Like it was so loud the whole, I, I could picture this guy's, the trainer's face. He just went, ooh, like that. The person next to me, uh, just shock and awe in their face. And, um, uh, I think that's probably what caused a C3, C4 herniation, which you'll get to look at in, in a little bit in the MRI image I have. Um, but I don't know. Um, had one doctor thinks that I've been living with this probably all my life and wouldn't know it. I, I don't know. We'll never know. I don't really care. Um, another symptom around that time is when I started feeling a uh, itchiness not itchiness but a feeling of fullness like something was stuck in my left ear uh, I was diagnosed went to an ENT a couple of them I was diagnosed with uh, hearing loss around 20% of the time I don't know what it is now I haven't been back uh, but just so for years I was constantly just pulling on my ear and going like this it sometimes it would get really annoying um, I didn't know until very recently that is a symptom of a cervical spine um, cord compression. I also, and this wasn't um, right away, but the last few years I noticed my gait uh, when I walked my right foot would point at about a 45 degree angle outward as I walked. Instead of like that, it was like this. Um, and as I progressed through my 40s, I always knew something wasn't something wasn't right. 
but I was in such good physical shape uh, compared to most people I know, um, and I felt mostly pretty good, um, that I just kept going. Um, I had some lower hip pain that now I'm pretty sure is due to that gait, and it was a chain reaction. But, you know, I, I kept going. So I kept going until February of this year. Um, and actually, that should say I have 2021 on the slide, but it should say 2022. Uh, all of a sudden, the radiculopathy, that pain down um, my scap, right scapula, shoulder, arm, um, which I hadn't had in probably a few years, uh, all of a sudden it came back with a vengeance. And three weeks go by and it hadn't gotten better. And it got to a point where I couldn't lift my arm. Um, a chiropractor was recommended to me uh, by a family member. Um, I was never a big fan of that idea, but I thought, eh, I'll try it. Um, and four weeks goes by and it was just four weeks of painful treatments that did nothing but make things worse. Um, thankfully, looking back, uh, the chiropractor only cracked my neck twice. Um, that third time might have been might have been the end of me, but we'll you know we'll never know. So at the end of the four weeks, I said to him, uh, the chiropractor, that hey, this isn't working, and he said, I know, um, you're getting worse. I think well, let's do one more week of treatments, and if that doesn't work, we'll go. I'll refer you to a sports med doc. Um, so I said, okay, and then I immediately left, canceled all my future appointments at the chiropractor and, and scheduled an appointment with a sports med doc as soon as I could. Sports med doc diagnosed it as a pinched nerve at C6, C7, uh, prescribed oral prednisone, I think three, four or five day cycle. Uh, that gave temporary mild relief, but not, not much. She then ordered an MRI saying that that was going to be necessary for um, us to be able to prescribe to get uh, an epidural steroid injection directly over top of the nerve. Basically, they just pour some steroid via syringe, epidural syringe over the nerve itself. And she said most of the time that that'll knock this out and you'll be good. So the MRI comes back uh, and that that was a fiasco because I'm highly claustrophobic but uh, eventually got an MRI and I get a call on April 1st uh, from the doctor that night saying I need to get to the emergency room that my MRI is the worst she's ever seen and I'm going to need emergency spine surgery as soon as possible within the next couple of days for sure. Um, I refused to go to the, ER, to the ER. I had just come from the gym. My, by that time, the radiculopathy had subsided enough that I was okay. Um, and it hurt, but it was, it was okay. It was bearable. So there was no way I was going to an ER. And, and, and so she said, okay, uh, I will schedule a spine surgeon for a consult with you is the first thing I can get as soon as I possibly can. So a couple days later, I met with a spine surgeon at University of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Hospital. They ran all kind of tests. If you're not familiar with these terms like hyperreflexia and Hoffman's, don't worry about it. But basically, they flick your fingers. They, you know, um, they do all kind of things. Um, and uh, I was positive uh, in a bad way for some things um, that you would never notice if you just saw me. Um, the, uh, the surgeon said, you know, we're kind of surprised you're even walking at this point. It, it's so bad, but you, you're presenting very well. I was very strong, I had no noticeable atrophy or limitations. So um, here's my MRI. And you can see at C3, C4, uh, it's severely compressed at the cord, and it's resulting in what's called myelolamatia, which is scarring of that cord. Uh, four fives perfectly fine. Five six and six seven discs there are are 
bulged out and compression, but not too bad. Um, if it wasn't for the pinch nerve at seven, um, really the big primary sole concern would be three, four um, and that compression. So that kicked off uh, a series of recommendations that I got. So I got what, what does any smart human do in this situation to get a second opinion. Um, so I mentioned I saw the person at Penn, it was surgeon number one, uh, recommended surgery ASAP, months, not years. Uh, hybrid approach with skipped level. So this is, uh, if you're familiar with this, these, with cervical spine surgery, you'll, you'll, you'll chuckle at this one. But uh, so C3-4 disc replacement, skip C4, C5 since it's fine and healthy, and then C5, C6 disc replacement, and then a straightforward ACDF uh, fusion um, through the front at C6, C7. He said, this will likely get worse for you over time, eventually leading to loss of strength and paralysis. So get surgery, and this was the recommendation. It sounded good, and in hindsight, and in consulting with one of the top cervical spine uh, surgery specialists in the world, who's located in New York City, he agreed that surgery that's outlined uh, by surgeon number one is absolutely perfect for my situation. The problem is no insurance company in, in the United States where I reside, I, and I have excellent insurance, um, no insurance company, um, no health insurer will cover that. Uh, they won't cover, most of them won't cover hybrids. And um, although if you're very young, um, you can often, I hear, get that approved uh, eventually. Um, they certainly won't uh, uh, approve non-adjacent disc replacements um, where you're skipping levels and, along with the hybrid approach. So uh, I didn't know that, that at the time. Um, so I had that one in my back pocket. I thought, let me get another, another uh, uh, surgeon's opinion to confirm surgery number one. But I was ready to go with that surgery. In fact, at one point I was scheduled for it back in, uh, I believe it was May. Early May, I was going to have that surgery. So uh, I call a local uh, Rothman Institute, uh, a highly respected local place here for orthopedics, and, and they I think they do just about everything now. They have specialists for everything. And I met with a fellow there, um, and he painted a much dire, more, more dire picture quite frankly said you know you need surgery asap not months you know as soon as possible uh, within the next couple of months i believe he said is would be uh the timetable he recommended uh, c3 through c7 so four level acdf along with the posterior um, entry to insert rods and screws to support the acdf so front and back um, he said that that first surgical recommendation is something that they would never, that no one at Rothman would ever recommend, and they had never heard of such a thing. Um, okay, uh, I later learned that that front and back uh, approach is a very kind of cookie cutter for Rothman and Jefferson. They call it the Rothman Special. Um, so uh, buyer beware there, but it's it's. Uh, you know, as it's supposedly tried and true in, in a great surgery. Um, quote from him that I recall is this will very likely get worse for you in the coming months if you don't get surgery soon. Paralysis is a definite concern. So as you can see, I had two very different recommendations, very different. Um, one, uh, surgery number one would leave me with almost all mobility intact of the cervical spine. Surgery number two would reduce it by somewhere between 25 and 35 percent uh, depending on you know number of factors but pretty much guaranteed loss of mobility um, so and not to mention a much longer recovery time 
um, since they would be going in posterior. So at this point I needed a third surgeon to tell me which of the first two were correct. So I ask around and I get a recommendation from a couple of people and I go to a completely different hospital um, that this surgeon was affiliated with and I meet with him. And uh, he shocks me and says that I would do nothing. I recommend no surgery, that you've likely had this all your life and didn't know it. And he said, I need to get back to my life and forget about this. Check in with him later in the year and let's see where it goes. With regards to surgery number one, he said that's crazy. I've never heard of someone doing a surgery like that. And regards, regarding surgeon number two's recommendation, he said, do you really at age 50 want a four level fusion front and back? To which I responded, of course, no, I don't want any surgery. So I took that recommendation and with a big smile on my face left and went back to my life. Uh, about a, well, it was more like a week, a week to two weeks later, I woke up with the, one morning with about 50% loss of, complete loss of strength in my right arm. And then over the coming weeks uh, into May, um, by the end of that month, the numbness and atrophy in my right arm increased. I noticed my right arm was shrinking and I had loss of strength. And, and I, at first I didn't realize it, but eventually I did. And that's when I, I realized that this was, you know, this was going to happen per the first two surgeons. So um, I think third, surgeon number three needed to be disregarded at that, that point, and I needed to find someone that really knew what they were talking about. So I scoured the uh, internet and found, uh, you know, eventually it's not easy, but found, figured out who were the top surgeons within a reasonable drive to me. Um, I'm on the East Coast, and I found the top guy by far is located up in New York City. Um, got on the phone, got an appointment, um, or at least kicked off the process with him. That's that's a whole they approach it differently there, um, but got on his radar, and at the same time um, confirmed that a surgeon that was recommended to me back before even surgeon number one, who's local in Philadelphia. Um, he was very widely published, um, along with that guy in New York, very widely published, very well respected, uh, um, head of the, I believe it was NAS or one of these, these surgery organizations that did for a while, um, very well respected. But both of these folks, are very, both these guys, surgeons are very much in demand, so it takes months to get in to see them. And the first three guys I got in like within days. So that what's that kind of tell you? So uh, I had to I had to sit tight and wait for these appointments. So surgeon number four in New York, um, Manhattan. I drive up there. He said can, they ran a lot of physical tests on me. Multiple surgeons were in the room. Um, training surgeons, uh, uh, residents. I don't know what they're called. Um, he sat me down said, you need to get this done. It's, I don't have a quote from him, but I can, I can still, I could still hear it in my mind. He said, this isn't going to end well for you if you don't fix it soon. Um, so he recommended a very extensive procedure, uh, C5 through C7 ACDF then flip me over and then posterior C3 laminectomy, 4-5 laminoplasty and since he was in there he'd go in and put rods and screws to support the C5 through 7 ACDF. The result of that, the reason, the rationale was that I would lose very little. Um, he didn't, he, he said none but it would probably be a little bit of mobility loss but not much, nothing noticeable. And that was very appealing, um, but he said that you know this is going to be a very painful uh, recovery, but the first few weeks will be horrible. But after that, you'll you'll uh, come out of it and and you'll have you'll be able to return to full activity pretty quickly. So that was that was pretty encouraging. Uh, 
as encouraging as it can be. But uh, that surgeon is located in New York City, in Manhattan, and logistically, there were some serious concerns. How am I going to get back? Um, who's, you, you know, there's all kind of things running through my, what if something goes wrong post-surgery? Uh, so I went ahead the following week, I was finally able to get into sur to see surgeon number five, who's local. And he recommended surgery ASAP. There was some delay. He wanted another MRI to see if something changed. He wanted to see if we could maybe do something a little less extensive. Um, he also was familiar with surgeon number four and was, you know, wanted to figure out why that approach was recommended by him because he respected all men. So there was there was a, a, a good month um, going back and forth um, between the MRI and a couple of consults. Uh, in the end, he, he recommended, you know, a, a straightforward C3 through C7 ACDF in the front. Um, the pros and cons um, of that approach, uh, I compared to, to number four here. Um, and in the end, uh, went, with, went with that one, went with number five. It was a tough decision, and I think they both would have been great surgeries. It's just a question of, and it really boiled down to logistics. Um, what if something went wrong post-surgery? I would I'd have been, at best, because let's face it, I'm coming from the Philadelphia suburbs, heading up into, into I think it's East Manhattan, uh, Midtown Manhattan. So I don't, I'm not even familiar with Manhattan. I went there one time. Um, and, you know, at best, we're talking a two and a half to three hour drive. That's if everything goes well traffic wise. Um, if you're in pain, if you're, you know, that's not good. So uh, in the end, I, I chose surgeon number five and I went with the lesser invasive four level front fusion. Um, so, yep, there I go. I chose number five. So I had that surgery on um, a one week ago today, August 10th. Um, today's the 17th, four level ACDF, C3 through C7. And as of now, I'm doing great. Um, I will record a separate video to talk about the cert pre and post you know, pre-surgery lead up the surgery day itself, and then the um, and then the next few days after that, I'll talk about how that went. But I'll I'll say this: um, I am absolutely shocked at. I literally woke up from surgery. They woke me up as they were wheel, wheeling me to the uh, um, observation unit at the hospital. I woke up and aside from a little bit of tightness or achiness in my upper shoulders, a very small amount, uh, no pain. I literally woke up with no pain and, and at that time I'm thinking, okay, brace yourself, Mark. At some point here in the next day or two or hour or two, it's going to hit you because you probably got some sort of, you know, um, you, know, you, you still have anesthesia in you. You, you probably got painkillers in you. They, they, I didn't know what they'd done. Um, that pain never came. I never was in pain. Um, aside from a, the first few days, some very tolerable shoulder soreness. It really wasn't bad. I wound up um, taking some Tylenol over the counter, like 650 milligrams. Um, I took that maybe... Four, four doses of that over two day, three day period. And that was it. And it confirmed with the surgeon who was pretty impressed, uh, amazed uh, at my um, lack of pain, um, confirmed with him that no, they, they only, they gave me a local lidocaine just to numb the incision point, but that was it. So um, one of the goals of me recording all these videos is to educate people that are going through this to 
to to let you know that um, it's doable. It sucks. I don't recommend it unless you have to do it. Um, and that's a whole nother topic. Um, but uh, and because a lot of people that choose this surgery, they're doing it because they got a little bit of arm pain or something. I, I think that's insane. But that's my opinion. Um, unless you've been told you've got, and, and it's very clear on the MRIs, uh, unless you unless you have severe cord compression, not minor cord compression, but severe cord compression, and um, you can't address this through uh, other ways, um, then uh, you know, then this surgery is, is or a surgery like it, as you saw the other options that would have all worked, by the way, except for the the guy that said do nothing, they would have all worked, um, and it's a question of what age are you, mobility. Um, all that stuff, logistics. So, so that's it for this video. I'm doing great. Um, and I'll follow up with another video uh, around the surgery itself and, and, and how that, that one night in the hospital, and I know I was out, and how that worked in, in the days after. So hang in there, and I uh, hope, you, hope you're, uh, you're learning something.